This is Coulomb's law, and here's the equation version of it. F sub e, this new electrostatic force, is lowercase k times this is absolute value of capital Q, absolute value of little q, divided by r squared. And we're going to go ahead and box it in. I'm adding the absolute value bars here. Our book doesn't really have that. No, it's not really the way that Coulomb originally wrote it, but we're going to be taking the absolute value of these charged objects so that we don't have to worry about the sign of them. So this equation is going to get us the magnitude of the force between these charged objects. So let's go ahead and define our terms like we always do. F sub e is the electrostatic force, this new type of force that exists between charged objects, but it's a force, so of course it's measured in newtons, there's nothing new, and of course it's a vector, we don't write, you know, obviously put the vector arrow there, it's, it's a force. Uh, capital Q and little q, those are two point charges, and that's going to be an important distinction about this equation. It only works for what we call these point charges, objects that only occupy a, a point in space. They're ridiculously small. The units are coulombs, as we discussed before. Now here, uh, already I'm using the word charge in a slightly different way, so it's a little bit strange. We've already introduced this uh, new idea of charge, and it's a little bit confusing, right? Some objects have charge, other objects don't. Objects that have charge can exert forces on each other, they can interact. Objects that don't cannot. But now we also use the word charge to sometimes mean the object that has the charge. We've used the word mass in a very similar way. Mass is this quality that some objects have, and really all objects have, right? It's a measure of their inertia, their tendency to resist acceleration. But then we also often refer to the object as a mass, right? We say a two kilogram mass. This mass interacts with that mass. And so we're using charge in a very similar way. So now we'll say that an object that has charge is a charge. Okay? It's a charged object, so it's sort of shorthand for charged object. So these are two point charges, two tiny, tiny objects that occupy a point in space, and we can only use Coulomb's law if they're point charges. Little r is the center to center distance of separation, and of course it's measured in meters, as all distances are. And then we have lowercase k, which is just the number that makes it work, it's a proportionality constant, it is the electrostatic constant. And from experiment, we figured it out into three sig figs, we'll use the value of 8.99 times 10 to the ninth, Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. I know the units look a little bit weird, but they're just the units that make the equation work, getting rid of two factors of distance, getting rid of two factors of charge, and returning Newtons for the force, so it's Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. This unit is up for grabs, it's not renamed after anyone, so if some of you do some, if one of you does some Nobel Prize winning work in electrostatics, you might get the units for electrostatic constantly after you, and then of course, you know, Nobel Prize, speech, thanks. You know the rest. Now, little k is an important enough number. We're going to box it in, as we often do with these fundamental constants. There are only six or seven numbers that control our entire universe, and this is one of them. This number actually defines our universe, and so if this number were any different, the entire universe would be different. Now, this equation, while very useful, does come with two warnings. The first one is the one I've already alluded to. It's only for point charges, tiny, tiny objects. However, I will stipulate it also works for spherically symmetric objects. If you have an object that has the shape of a sphere, we can pretend that all of its charge is located at its center, and this equation works just the same, even if it's not a tiny object. As long as it's spherically symmetric, it still works. But that brings us to the second warning. This equation only works if neither object is inside the other, because now we're allowing for the fact that it could be a, a larger object, but if the other object is inside, then this equation doesn't work, and we have to figure out other ways to do it, but we'll get to those situations later. But this will account for pretty much all situations, most of the situations we'll be doing. The capital Q, lowercase q, is not really the larger charge or smaller charge, we just designate them this way, as we did back in gravitation, so we can distinguish between which charge does which role.